Welcome back everybody, Just Mike here. Anyway, believe it or not, we have another cuckoo clock to work on. I'm not sure if I'm happy with this clock, and let's not say that I'm not happy with the people that bought it, but I'm dissatisfied with the clock makers. Anyway, let me show you this clock and show you what I'm a little bit dissatisfied with. By the way, don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up and maybe a comment just to say hi if you don't have anything else to say. So let's get into it. So this is a clock we have. It's uh, got the two live, we'll say, squirrels on it. And so that makes a lot of people, I guess, mainly the women, sorry, but that's what it is, happy. Uh... Right there, you can see the white plastic, uh, let's call it gear that the people are supposed to turn around and dance on. I am not happy about that cheap plastic that's in there. It does have a decent cuckoo bird in there. It's all plastic, legs and all. We did get the weights there's three of them these are 275 grams has a pendulum this clock isn't a super big one it didn't come with the topper so i don't know if they still have the topper or not but otherwise we're at 11 and a quarter inches tall and i would guess you have at least an eight to eight and a half inch topper that would go on here. It looks like it suffered some damage here because I see uh, staples in here where the hole saw sawed in half. Let's look inside. And see if we can see anything special. That's a good idea when you're shipping these to put paper towel in behind or in through or something to keep these from banging and making a noise. We'll get that out in a minute. That's the dancers. And I'm not sure why they're off. I don't know if this clock was already started to be worked on before. or And they couldn't do it or what. I don't remember. I see we have a plastic uh, winding wheel here on the music box. When it comes to plastic, this doesn't make me happy, I will admit. On the gear of the music box, right here, it's plastic, but that's, nowadays, that's on almost all your newer ones. Uh, this is a 25, meaning it's a eight, or a one day, and this was built in 74, because it has 25 slash 74. It's a regular, and both the whistle boxes have lost their tops. This one happens to be still good, it just it needs to be re-glued back on, and the other one's dangling around inside there also. So let me go ahead and disconnect the chains, because I'm not sure if I can even get this thing to tick. Oh yeah, it ticks. But because we have it here, we're going to go ahead and uh, service this clock. We're going to put, clean it, put new oil in it. See, this is starting to come apart. And whether that's from shipping or what, I don't know. That chain is just flat out stuck in there. Might be stuck on its nail. 
Anyway, let me go ahead and take the hands off, loosen the bird, and let's get into this. So looking on the side of this box right here is your whistle to, for the cuckoo. I see a screw, but I don't see a nail anywhere. I'm on the bet you these are glued in and oh this one's actually coming out this one here is laying on the bottom so they might not have had had to put a nail in there you can see I need to re-glue the bellow back on let's look at this side oh we lucked out you got a screw and a nail Boy, I thought I was going to have some work ahead of me. So once you get the screw out, usually these are in pretty tight, even though because of the nail, what I normally do is I'll push this in a little bit so I can get some space in here. And then I can take the screwdriver looking for the nail, try to put it where the nail is, and then I can just pop it off. You see, obviously, we have to repair that bellow. And I don't know if I can get all these parts out. Let me see. So there's plastic gears underneath. And there's the uh, little dancers. The bellow. To the broken one. Now you can see the white plastic pieces all over in there. Like I say, it doesn't thrill me. It's still a cuckoo clock and hopefully it still works. Now your wires, I see we only have one wire to lift the bellow open. So I have to put another wire in there for that. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and just take the movement out. We might take the music box out, but not immediately. And let's see. Well, it still winds. There we go. So it looks like it caught okay, but it doesn't sound like it's right. So we'll be taking that music box out so we can get to stop where it's supposed to. And it doesn't help that I'm stopping going with my finger so it can't catch properly either. Anyway, let me get this movement out. So I wasn't necessarily playing or paying attention. I told you I was missing a lift wire this one doesn't need it because the arm here is actually the lift wire also the bellows has this ring on here and how this works is this will fit through here and then that can then open it as needed so we're good there so gluing it back to this this here would be going like this the dust just hanging on this thing so it might not have ran for a while or it might have started falling apart I don't know anyway I'm gonna go ahead and take this off you just put a screwdriver in there spread it open a little bit so you can slide it out of there That way it's not in your way. By the way, did you take pictures before you pulled this thing out? If you're going to try it, while this is in, you should take pictures so you can see where each one of these arms lift up to work the bellows. 
And then with this pointing down, you should take pictures in here. This mechanism that c controls the bird of uh, popping in and out. You should get an angle of the picture this way, besides this way, so you can see what side the bird is supposed to be on on that rod, for example. Make sure you got good pictures, uh, preferably a flash so you can look inside and see, for example, which winder goes on which side. Pictures are going to be your best friend. See, this is really dusty, so whether this was actually running still or had sat on the wall without being wound for quite a while, I don't know. Just looking at this dust, it kind of looks that way. It was just setting. But anyway, we're going to take this movement apart and clean it totally, refresh it so it'll be almost like brand new for him. Them. <laughs> Whichever. I'm going to screw them back in so we know for a fact those go into the whistle boxes. These screws I'm taking out here, I'm going to leave the washer on them, but I'll put those into the music box so that way we know for a fact that's where they go. Uh, myself, I would probably already know, but the thing is, if this is your first clock, you're just trying to make it simple for yourself. This is the plastic winder. I've never seen one before. Right in there, there's a tooth that uh, moves into the gears that are on the wheel itself. So this one has two tunes to it. So it looks like it might have had a little plastic pin or whatever that popped down in and held this in place. I'm going to have to see if I might have a, well, a washer if I can, but a, a small screw I can screw in there to make sure this doesn't pop off. And it's hanging up sometimes, whether it's these here that need There's a actually to me it's a bit of a drag so they probably need cleaned the sides. It's not too bad, but just same we're talking plastic on plastic and that's not always a good thing. So this is a nice one. You can unscrew it instead of it being pressure fitted on. So that would be an easy adjustment to get it to release or drop when it's supposed to the, the cuckoo arms. That thing's just not wanting to come off of there. Sometimes putting a drop of oil and waiting about five seconds or so. And I did that inside here. Sometimes that makes things come apart, like the nuts to the hands and that kind of stuff. This didn't want to come off. I'm not going to deal with it right now. Let's go ahead and take off this arm here. What I normally do is I'll put a screwdriver in there and bend it open just a little bit. Depending on the size of it, you might need a bigger screwdriver. You don't want to bend these too much because they can break. And I just twist the screwdriver up in there.
And now we'll take off these E clips. This screwdriver is not magnetic and I should be using one because sometimes I go flying to no man's land. This here, we're going to just call it the snail. This arm here drops down onto here and depending on which part of the snail it hits, this here will drop down and tell the clock how many times to cuckoo. And this lifts up, see that drop down, this lifts up, then drops, and now these teeth here will tell the clock how, how many times the cuckoo, which all has to do with this here. Now sometimes this gets hung up because it, it dried out, got gummy or whatever, and it won't fall all the way. Sometimes if you turn your hands counterclockwise, this here will get stuck in behind. Kind of like that. I, I almost got it behind there. And what the problem is, if this thing isn't allowed to cuckoo, then, or I shouldn't say allowed to cuckoo, if if this thing was turned counterclockwise, this here is kind of a pointer-like look. It does have an angle here, so you can possibly turn your hands backwards in order to, let's say, set it for the hour uh, savings time or whatever, daylight savings time, whatever. That's not good for this clock because it can only do it just so many times and eventually you might bend this gear here or lever and like I say it can get stuck in there. Also we have right here not on all clocks but on this one it has a spring here spring wire goes over and it helps push this down so it counts right. So we got the E-clip off of those two. We have this important washer here. That washer is meant to hold, obviously, this gear down, but also hold the snail down so it doesn't start traveling out too far. And then this thing will miss it also. And now this plastic gear comes off. It's already got its riser on there, so you don't have to worry about anything. It's your real old clocks that might have a brass uh, lift there. Or it might be a certain brand. I'm not positive. I ran into the brass barrel for a lift and didn't realize it almost lost it. So you lift this up out from behind there. It comes clear up. Unlocks from the case, I guess we'll call it. And pulls right out. And now we have these two. When this thing's done cuckooing, let's say that their that their peg is supposed to fall clear down into the bottom of the mouth of the Pac-Man. So these two levers has uh, it's not exactly called an E-clip. I don't remember the name of them. Those used to be what I'd consider a I hate you clips. And now I have a tool that actually takes those off. So it's so easy to do now. You don't have to open it too much, and they pop right off. And I used to go through hell trying to get those things off of there. Don't remember who it was, but on one of my commenters, my subscribers, 
They told me about another guy that was using it, and I am very thankful for that. Before I get this one out, our star wheel here, this here is, looks like the shorter, this is the taller. I don't know if it matters on this clock because I do believe this thing has music on the half hour and the hour, but normally one side shorter. This will lift this part up and as it's lifting it up so far, it will let this wheel turn that has uh, the warning pin on it. It'll turn a quarter to a half a turn before it catches another lever. And then it will not let go of that until this here drops all the way down. Let me get this back in. He'll be up here with the warning pin. And then once it's time to cuckoo this will let it go it'll drop down and that lets this gear go that has the warning pin on it until it's done cuckooing so i don't take that off it's pressure fitted on there to time this clock on this portion you can grab a hold of this by holding the gear and turn it I prefer not to because I don't want to by accident get that to become loose which I've seen where they've come loose and people have put glue on them which I would think that was a clock shop that did that but what I normally do is I'll separate the movement see where this is setting and then the gear that has the warning pin on it I will pop that out of the frame make sure it's not touching this one gear inside that it turns because that needs to hold still then you can spin the one at the warning pin until it hits the right spot on here in which I'll probably have to do it to this clock I've shown in a couple other videos normally it's kind of hard to show because you are talking about a small area in there so now we'll untie, so I can turn this, unlock it, and get it out. And then we can take, take these out. It'd been nice if I could have got that out so it's not a pain. This one's going to be a bit of a pain because you can't unlock it. I'm just going to leave it in there. I just have to remember to put it back in when I put the frame in because obviously this isn't going to swing around and un unlock itself. So now we need to take these four nuts off and we can separate the frame and carefully take it apart and see if we can get a picture looking straight down onto the movement to see what the gears look like compared to trying to put them in with the pictures this way. But it's still good to put the get the pictures this way so you can refer to that if there happens to be something hidden in your photo when you did take the picture this way. So take the last nut off and because we couldn't get this off the winding gear will also come off and then we're going to try to slide it out there too, the pendulum part. I see a gear stuck.
a little difficult with that in the way. I'm going to still try to work on getting this off. Because I'm not sure why it's wanting to stay on there. Once you undo the screw, it usually comes right off. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And so, see that all stayed in there. So, with the exception of the winder, there's all your gears. Go ahead and take pictures again of the two pieces here that make the bird go in. Take pictures all the way around so it gives you a better idea and you're taking pictures downward so you can see the top of the gear and the areas this is in. Go and work on taking this stuff off. Let's take off the time train side first. See it is oily looking or uh, filth from the kitchen or something. It's dry on there, but it's uh, just from sitting, I do believe. Take the winder out. It seems to work good. It just looks like this has never been cleaned before. It's not a heart attack, but you can see all the dust and stuff on the gears. Like I say, this thing, I would say, has been setting a while. And so this here's the cuckoo bird side. That one won't come off because the Pac-Man is on the other end of it down here. And so we won't worry about that. We have our fan or governor that uh, slows the cuckoo bird down. And this needs to be slightly stiff but movable. Do you right if it just spun around like real easy you'd have to tighten this up in order for the cuckoo bird not to sound like a machine gun this here is indented in because it goes ar around this gear this peg when you're putting it back in, you need to make sure it's on this side of this because it falls into that hole to lock into place. That's the hold the cuckoo bird. This here has your warning pin on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. And the warning pin, that's what you're going to be paying attention to. Now to get this one out, we have another E-clip in here. And when you put this back in, you should make sure to lube this because you won't see it and it might end up getting stiff on you and of course it sits like this underneath that gear this here is pressure fitted on I never worry about taking that off And like I said, don't worry about taking this off. You can move it around and get it to clean up. Ultrasonic cleaner, it doesn't necessarily get into all these grooves. So after I take it out, I scrub this down with a uh, hot water and Dawn dishwashing soap and a toothbrush. The wife doesn't mind, or at least she doesn't know. And 
I scrub all the gears, all the pieces, and the Dawn dish soap seems to help quite a bit. After all that's done, and have them dry, each one of these holes where the bushings would go, the pivots and whatnot, I make sure to run a screwdriver, screwdriver, oh my gosh, a toothpick in each one of them holes and as your toothpick gets black because normally everything doesn't come out of that hole and if that oil's turned to varnish or whatever it just doesn't want to come out and so twisting the screw the toothpick in each one of these holes cleans it out and then you're ready to go now these plates this is a new enough movement it probably has a uh, lacquer sprayed over or whatever and so I don't want to leave these in too long I'll be putting them in for about 10 minutes take a look at them and see if they're coming clean and I might just go ahead and pull them out in 10 minutes I'm not too worried about it this way the uh, lacquer that's over this doesn't come off if it does start coming off I don't deal with it or I should say the way I deal with it I just soak the plate in all the way and then give it a polish try to get all that uh, lacquer off of there and then I give it a wax and it usually looks a lot shinier than what you even see it now even if it was clean So we have all the parts clean and dry. We got the phone right there that uh, shows the picture of how this stuff goes back in. So let's get to it. So I don't have any of the adjustments done as in for the snail and whatnot, but I do have the gears all in. And so before I do anything else, I want to oil my movement. So that way, if there's anything in here that's going to cover up any of these pivots, at least I know I'll have all these pretty much oiled. On here, you can see I got a little extra oil on here. This does suck it up, but not all the time or all the way. After I've oiled it, I'm going to take a tissue and dab the plate where I've oiled because I don't want any extra oil sitting on this movement. All that does is causes dust to cling on to those areas. Now do the backside. 
the backsides, or actually it's the front side of the movement, is more important because that's where all the levers go. So the next thing I want to do is put these levers in. So I'll set both these in their place and then I'll put those clips on from the other side. And get a good bite on that one. Too deep actually. So they're on there. They move a little bit. That's what we need. This one might have to go down a little bit tighter. So this one here you can see needs to be adjusted again because it's not down all the way. Let's snug this up. This here is a cheater way of doing it, which actually isn't a cheater way, just I don't like doing it. I'm holding on to the gear. Of course, we don't have our spring in yet. Let's go ahead, short in where the spring is. Put that on, hook it over the frame, twist this around, and catch on top of there. This here wants a catch because it normally has the rest of this on there. Now the snail can go on. We don't have this set. We have to turn the hand to adjust this for how many times it's going to cuckoo. Right now I'm just triggering it. And that's kind of a cheater way, let's say. Anyway, I can go ahead and oil this, this. I'm not going to put the E-clip on yet because there's a good chance I need to move this to get that timing right. And I forgot to mention where these posts go inside this lever and inside here. Don't forget to run a toothpick through them 
The newer ones aren't as bad, but your older movements, sometimes they still build up some kind of a, let's call it a corrosion or a buildup of oil that's dried in there. And it's good to whack that out of there. Like I say, some of these don't have springs to hold, help hold things down. They're just a pin you put over it and they need to move freely. This needs to be able to drop freely onto here and not be sticking. Otherwise you might end up with this thing stuck up here and it'll be kind of like in the one o'clock position and always ring just one time. It has to drop down on here to let the clock know what time it is. Let's just pick this up a little bit, spin it around. And let's get the square hole for the minute hand on here so I can turn this thing. Dropped all the way down, but it's kind of in the wrong place. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's your half hour. Now I'm going to watch where this drops. See, it's just barely catching on. I don't like that. I know it's wrong. And so I actually need to lift this up and turn it a gear or two or three. So that's kind of where I want to sit. Oh, and I'm not turned enough for it to cuckoo. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And if you can see that where it's located, I don't like it being located over to there because that means that this is turned too far. I'm bringing it back one tooth. So on the half hour, this does not necessarily fall on here. It may hit it on one o'clock area, but it only pops the one, we'll call it tooth there. Here's your half hour. One, so, well that was one. 1.30 See it doesn't quite fall all the way One, two, I don't like where it's sitting again I got too many teeth, I guess we'll call it over. So I'm going to back it up a little bit.
There's your half hour. The half hour, that two point star that was down there with the frame and on the shaft, the half hour part of the star isn't as tall as the other end of the star is why it only cocks just a little bit to set for the half hour. Here's dropped all the way so it's going to count the hour. One, two, three. There's the half hour. One, two, three, four. So I'm much happier with that. And I can say you always pay attention to where it's hitting on here because you don't want it too close. Otherwise, it's going to start ringing the wrong, wrong hour. Let's spin this around real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we get the half hour. Like I say, this won't drop all the way. See, it dropped just a little bit. And there's our half hour. This should be our twelve o'clock. It's going to drop all the way down. And there's where it's going to start counting when it's time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Beautiful. And on here, don't forget to put your disc that's going to hold everything in place. Yeah, I lost my spring. I'm making sure it's not too tight. It just has a little bit of wiggle room. That seems to work. Let me set this back a little bit. That's what we want. So for the music box lever, put that on there. As I remember is up a bit. You're going to have to adjust this once you get it into the clock as I remember it had let's call it quite an angle there and now we can put in the shorter 
lift arm for the bellow. So you can see it's the little short arms in there to lock this into place. The same with the short arm on here. You push it this in and that short arm will lock it into place. Now all you have to do is put your spring wire on. Put it through the hole and kind of give it a loop back onto itself. So now to adjust these, you need to trigger the clock and have it have it run cuckoo, let's say, until it's done. There it shut off. So I'm going to hold this so it doesn't wind backwards on me. What I'm looking for is this needs it goes cook or dong cook coo. Once it hits that coo, now you want to tighten your screw so it'll be in time, then test it again. I gotta put the screw back in. Well, I'm sorry, but we do have a part two on this video and it's going to be dealing with the music box, uh, cleaning the parts for the dancers and that kind of stuff. And then we're going to get this clock back together and working. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe because it's free. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And until, like I say, next time, God bless.